In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can attack the rim in basketball and how you can be successful doing so. Being able to attack the rim is extremely important because, of course, a layup is a very high percentage shot. However, you can't drive to the rim if you can't shoot. Let me explain. Okay, so let's say you're out on the perimeter and you want to drive to the rim. There's going to be obviously a defender in the way trying to stop you. If you cannot shoot that three-point shot, guess what? That defender is not going to be playing you close enough for you to be able to attack the rim. You have to be able to shoot this shot to keep that defense honest because if they're defending you close and you're right there, that's exactly what you want when somebody is when you're trying to attack that rim. But if they're sitting back three, four, five, six feet, you're not going to be able to have that angle to attack the rim. So that's number one, is to work on your shooting. You can't just be a one-dimensional player to get to the rim. You also need to be able to shoot. You need to be a three-level scorer, three-point mid-range and at the rim. So the number one thing that I can tell you right now is when you are attacking that rim to keep your dribbling to a minimum. There's a reason for that. So when you're dribbling and you're attacking the rim, if you're taking more than one dribble to get from the three point line to the rim, you're going to be slowing yourself down for one, because when you're dribbling, you're not going to be moving as fast as if you're taking your last two steps. And also when it comes to dribbling when attacking the rim, the longer this ball is out of your hand when you're dribbling, the more susceptible you become to that ball getting stolen. If that ball is close to your chest or above your head, that is preferable because now that ball is in your hands and if anyone's trying to swipe down on it or swipe up on it, guess what? It's in your hands and if you've got two hands on it, it's going to be extremely hard to steal. So we have to get used to being able to attack the rim from the three-point line with only one dribble. This should be the number one thing that every single player needs to learn and needs to be able to utilize in game. Because if we're attacking that rim, if we're taking one dribble, two dribble, maybe even a third just to get to the rim, guess what? That ball is going to get stolen. You need to keep it within one dribble. So if you're a bit younger, you can do this without anything fancy. You can just spin that ball to yourself and attack. One dribble, one, two, and then up at the rim. Now I'm six foot two. This is not a large distance for me to attack. However, if you're a bit younger, let's say you're a five foot one basketball player and you're in like grade six or grade seven, taking one dribble and two steps, this may seem like a very large distance, but you should be able to do this quite easily. What you need to do is, of course, when you spin that ball to yourself, when you take that dribble, you need to be really trying to push off hard on that back foot. When you take your first step towards the rim, you should not be walking this distance, you should not be jogging this distance. You need to be able to push off on those uh, back foot. So whatever foot is at the back, you're trying to push off from. So you get this ball, you're trying to push off to get to that rim. You shouldn't be doing a normal run, a normal jog, or even a walk to the rim. You need to be really pushing off and creating as much distance you, as you can between each step that you take. The whole name of the game here is to try to cover as much space as possible with the fewest amount of dribbles and the, really the fewest amount of steps. This is really going to help accelerate your game because now if you can attack that rim hard with only one dribble and two steps, you're going to be able to absolutely destroy a ton of defenses because what's going to happen is you'll be attacking that rim and if you do it fast enough, that help side defender from this side, if you're attacking from over there, may not be able to come out and defend defend you fast enough and if that's the case guess what you're gonna be able to blow right by him or you can draw that blocking foul on him as well the other thing is, is you need to also be able to change directions this is when a lot of these different drills for example a one leg RDL when you put bring one leg up touch the ground with the ball and go up with the shot that's really going to be working on your core, really going to be working on your hips so that you can change directions on those two steps. Yes, you need to be taking really long strides to be able to get to that rim, but if you can take really long strides and change directions to get around help side defenders, you're again going to be extremely deadly on the basketball court. Next is trying to read defenses. 
when a defense is closing out on you, let's say just as an example, you were out on the perimeter and you just got that pass and now your defender is trying to come out and defend you. There's three ways that that defender is going to try and defend you and that is first he's going to be sprinting out, maybe you're a really good shooter, he's going to be sprinting out, he's going to be all stretched out trying to contest your shot in which case you should then when you get that ball and you see that player closing out hard on you with his hand way up afraid of you shooting go for that shot fake get him up into the air do a good shot fake and I mean like up like up on your toes ball above your head like if you're about to shoot that lifts that defender as soon as he lifts one dribble right to the rim you've got an easy layup number two is he may be trying to force you either baseline or he may be trying to force you towards the middle of the key. There's a reason for that. So it all comes down to his strategy and then maybe his team's strategy. So usually in a zone, what you would wanna do is to force towards the sideline, which means that this is his top foot. His top foot is down middle. He's trying to force you sideline because he wants to trap you maybe in a 3-2 or a 2-3 zone in the corner. And if that's the case, then that's where he wants you to go. You want to go the actual uh, or total opposite as to where he wants you to go. So you want to attack that top foot. So if that's his top foot, you jab this way. That moves him maybe farther over that way, like if you're about to go that way. And then you attack that top foot and you go down the middle of the key. In a zone, this is the most deadly area because now you're going to cre create a lot of eyes on you. You're going to collapse the defense. And if you don't have an open layup, because you've collapsed the defense, you can kick it out to different three-point shooters and they're going to have a wide open shot. That's also called the dribble drive offense as well. However, if you're going up against a man-to-man -man defense, they may force you middle. They may force you towards the middle of the key because now they're going to be able to force you down middle and at that point, the help side defender on this side will be able to come out and potentially take a charge on you or potentially just double team you in the key. And if they're playing really good man to man, that defender is going to slide down and cover potentially both or even just one man. You want to then, of course, again, go the opposite direction. And if they're trying to force you down middle, that's your top foot. You need to go and jab middle, make them move over, and then you've got the whole right side to attack that rim. The other benefit to this is, especially in a man to man defense, if you're attacking down towards the baseline on the right side, because now you've lost your man, you're going to be getting the, the strong side help defender, which is something that you should really not see. And when you start attacking, if you don't have that open lane and he comes down to try to take a charge, very easy pass out to that corner and your team's going to have a wide open three. So this is how you can be a deadly deadly driver and be able to attack the basket with success in basketball. So of course if you've got a friend or a buddy who is able to defend you, they can pass you that ball, they can close out, they can give you a top foot and then you can attack that rim, you can go up for a floater, whatever it may be. Or if you're all alone, you can find a line, just like we see here, we can do a quick ball control drill, a bounce on either side of that line, cross through the legs, one dribble and attack that rim and go up for that layup. And remember, whatever you do on one side, you also want to be able to do on the other. Cross through, attack, one, two, up with the left hand. I hope that this video helps you be able to attack the rim more in basketball. If it does, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.